Well, look, I, I think this is an appropriate response. Um, it's a response that is consistent with shareholder expectations and certainly past uh, experiences. And it, and it look, and it ultimately it flags accountability to to shareholders that obviously, you know, Qantas had, ha, has had a few issues and, and has had governance concerns and uh, usually in, the, in these situations, the appropriate step is for um, the chairman and, and directors to, to take accountability and, uh, and, and flag a board refreshment and to move along. Richard Goiter recently told a Senate committee he had the support of investors, although retail shareholders told this program differently. When did he lose the support of investors? Look, it's very difficult to say exactly the moment when uh, Mr Goiter uh, made the decision that he did not have the full support of shareholders. I would suspect that the company would have been uh, engaging with an assortment of shareholders over the last few weeks and certainly in the last week no doubt that there would have been some concerns expressed by, by shareholders and, and ultimately um, to, to uh, shall I say, reduce the pressure on the company, uh, a, a decision had to be made. It, it, it just was probably not possible for the, for the chairman and directors just to, uh, to, to retain their positions on the board um, and, and to go on. Uh, so I would suggest that it would have been in the last week or so that the decision was, was put, in, uh, put in train. Following his appearance at the Senate inquiry, there's something to be made then about the timing? Well, look, uh, there's no doubt um, Qantas has been under a lot of scrutiny. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of news that has come out. Um, certainly, after the, uh, the 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 uh, the company's Senate appearance and and Mr. Goiter's Senate appearance, there there would have been continued scrutiny on on his responses and and more developments. And I would suggest that there were probably more discussions with investors and investors being more focused um, as the AGM starts approaching investors being more focused on on what they see to be the issues of the company and the direction of uh, leadership going forward and ultimately I think um, based on our past experience there's that it would have been untenable for the um, in current board and, and chairman to stay in place for uh, for you know without without an announcement of succession being put in place. An additional three board directors will retire by February. Does the board renewal go far enough? Well, there are two new directors uh, standing for election at this year's AGM that were appointed, uh, from my understanding, in May and August. So we have had the start of some succession. Three directors will go. And look, my expectation would be that over time, as the corporate memory starts transitioning at board level, that the board will refresh. These things can take uh, two years. Uh, based on past experiences of other companies that have had you know, various governance and performance issues. So, so the, the, from, from an, a shareholder perspective, um, it, I would suspect that there will be more a board transition going forward, but it, it's unlikely to be in the benefits of the company that everybody goes straight away. Um, but um, the, there, there will likely be uh, ongoing searches for new directors. What do you expect to see at next month's AGM? Um, look, I think at the, at the AGM there will be uh, an expectation from investors and, and no doubt it'll be heavily scrutinised um, and uh, the CEO will be expected to make um, some further comment on, on what the strategy is to go forward in terms of customer issues, any other events uh, that, are, that are drawing to a resolution. Um, the chairman will obviously, uh, you know, provide his further comments. So it's all about informing the market. So far, you know, my, from what I can see, the, the company hasn't been, uh, or certainly from the board level, uh, there hasn't been a lot of information. There will be a lot of questions from investors on what, what happens going forward. Obviously, um, you know, the shares held by Mr Joyce and his remuneration going forward will be a topic for discussion. Um, other issues such as customer remediation plans, strategies for dealing with the customer issues and obviously um, the much discussed uh, uh, fleet update. There's obviously quite a lot of capital expenditure there that investors will be looking at. So, so the, the, the AGM will be quite active, I would expect.
Well, the failures at Qantas have further implications for Richard Goida. He remains chair of both the AFL and Woodside. Well, uh, I think th this is a question, f this is a difficult question, it's a question for investors. Um, uh, Mr Goida is a high profile and very experienced company director and senior executive. So um, this is going to be something for, for shareholders uh, going forward. Um, Woodside is obviously another um, company in the spotlight, certainly from an environmental perspective. Um, it has acquired the BHP assets uh, um, and, and, and the company has expanded. So um, I, I think it's hard to predict what will happen now going forward. I would not envisage Mr Goiter's tenure at uh, Woodside being in jeopardy at the moment. But look, that will be a, a, an issue for uh, for shareholders to discuss with uh, with the Woodside, and uh, and obviously, um, you know, the AFL will will consider their position there as well. Vaz Kolesnikov, thank you. Thank you.